I made two unexpected changes for myself in 2023. One of them is this guy right here, and I'll talk about this in another video, but the other is switching from Google Workspace to Microsoft 365. I'm gonna break this video up into a couple different parts. First, I'm gonna talk about why I changed. I'm gonna talk about the benefits of switching to 365 for myself, and then maybe give a little bit of a comparison between some of the features that both of them have. First of all, switching to Microsoft 365 was unexpected because I have a digital marketing agency and I'm a Google workspace provider. I am a Google partner and I actually sell Google Workspace services to clients. I have several clients that I manage their Google Workspace accounts, and I've had Google Workspace through all of the many name changes that it's had all the way back to Google Apps, and maybe it was even called something before that. Google has been great because it's simple. It provided an easy way for me to have my own email address while using the Gmail platform, while being able to utilize Google Drive and have tons of storage available. It was just a good platform. It worked on all devices, whether I was using an iPhone or I was on Android, whether I was on a PC or my Mac, and it was web-based, which means I can access it anywhere, even if I didn't have one of my devices with me. So Google Workspace was a great option. I never wanted to go with Microsoft 365 because it was seemed too complicated. There seemed to be too much going on, and whenever I had to help a client out with their Office 365, and now it's gonna become Microsoft 365, whenever I had to help out with that, it was always problematic and challenging for me. Over the last, I'd say, couple of years, probably at least the last year, Microsoft has made tons of changes to all of their platform within what's now Microsoft 365. I found that I was paying for a lot of services outside of Google Workspace that I needed to run my business and do the things that I needed to do that Microsoft is just implementing into their platform. Looking at the cost that I was incurring, to utilize Google Workspace along with all of these other tools that I needed was crazy when I could just sign up for Microsoft 365 and have access to the majority of these things. So when I realized that, I kind of dove in headfirst and started switching over. And the more that I started using the different Microsoft 365 tools, the more I realized like, this is great. This is going to be great for me moving forward. I really like these tools, and I found even more software that I had subscriptions for that I could get rid of as I dove deeper into Microsoft 365. While I'm still a Google Workspace reseller and support my clients, I'm in the process of becoming a Microsoft reseller so that I can offer their services to clients moving forward. Let me talk a little bit about the cost because that is the main factor that was driving me to make the change. I was paying for Google Workspace. I was actually paying for Office 365 because I wanted access to Microsoft Word and Excel and those other applications because a lot of times I would get documents and files sent to me from clients and I would need to open them in Microsoft software. Even though I can open them on Google Workspace in Docs or Sheets, or I can open them on a Mac in Numbers or Pages, it just wasn't the same. Something was up with the document, I wasn't able to manipulate it correctly, and I needed access to those applications. So I was already paying essentially for Microsoft 365, and I just wasn't really thinking about it in that way that I'm already paying for this, why don't I just move my email over? It wasn't until I started realizing that I'm paying for Calendly, to make it easier for people to book appointments and meetings and consultations and stuff with me. I was paying for that. I was paying for a to-do app, which I've used Todoist forever. I used TickTick last year, and I've been paying for that application. I've been paying for better email applications to use on my different devices so that I could be more productive. And so I had a lot of subscription fees that I was paying for that I just wanted to get rid of and as I got more into Microsoft 365, I realized I could do that. Google Workspace and Microsoft 365 are the same price at the base level. 
You get access to cloud apps, you get your email address, you get a little bit of cloud storage, and it's great whether you go with Microsoft or you go with Google. With the base plan, which I believe at this time is $6 per email address, whether you go Google Workspace or Microsoft 365, you get the email address, you get some cloud storage, and you get web-based versions of the software. That's even on the Microsoft side. You don't actually get the applications that you can download and install on your computer you get web-based. But for $2.25 more on the Microsoft side, you get access to all of their software applications that you can download. Word, Excel, all of that downloadable and installable. So I was already paying for that at the beginning of all of this. So when I decided it was time to make the switch, um, I was looking at pricing and there's some differences in pricing. If you want more storage, that's when things start to get a little bit different. On Microsoft 365, you're gonna have one terabyte per user, whether you're on the base level all the way through their small business plans. And their small business plans range between $6 and $22 a month. On Google, however, your $6 a month plan starts out with 30 gigabytes for storage, which is significantly less. And with Google, I had a what would be called an enterprise plan at the time because I had three accounts, which was the minimum to have enterprise plan. And that gave me access to unlimited storage with Google Drive, which meant I could upload as much as I could. And I was utilizing Google Drive in that way. I had about 40 terabytes of data stored on Google Drive. I had moved away from Google Drive because Google Drive is just slow. I feel like the more you upload, the slower it gets. And I had switched over to Dropbox because I needed something faster and more robust. So there was another thing that I was paying for on top of Google Workspace that was not serving me, which was their storage. So as you jump through the price points in their small business plans, which is $6, $12, $18, or enterprises contact Google for pricing, it's really storage based because Google doesn't have a whole lot more to offer you. Yes, there are some security and management tools that get added in there and a few additional business tools that may or may not make sense based on what you're, you're needing within your business, but it really is storage based that they jump you through. So Google Workspace leaning more on storage than Microsoft 365. Whereas with the Microsoft 365, it's one terabyte of storage per user on all of their small business plans. And you don't get more unless you jump up to their enterprise plans, which start to get more expensive. And then they have enterprise plans that uh, jump up to five terabytes per user at around $23 per user per month. When I started utilizing Microsoft 365, I realized though the Google Workspace in interface is very simple, very easy for me to manage and get around, the Microsoft 365 interface provided me with much more that I can work with. I didn't need much of that because I'm a small business. I really just utilize the email accounts for myself and my family, and I utilize them for business within that. But the tools felt much more enterprise to me, even though I don't need all of that. Setting up aliases for my emails was easier to manage and connecting domains to my account so much easier. There was a lot there that was just so much easier. So let's jump beyond that and let's jump into uh, some of the differences in software. As I mentioned before, there is a massive difference between cloud-based Google Workspace applications like Docs and Sheets and actual software that Microsoft offers like Word and Excel. I needed that and I was already paying for that. And so this downloadable software on your computer has a ton more features than what you're gonna get in the cloud versions. Even on Microsoft, Microsoft's cloud version doesn't have all the features that their software version has, but it talks to each other very well. You create an elaborate document on your desktop and then you upload it to the cloud and then you open it in the cloud, it's going to still be manageable. Whereas sometimes if you try to do that, uh, same thing, create something in Word and then open it up in Docs over on Google Workspace, you're gonna have some issues and same thing even goes with Sheets. It's just not robust enough. It doesn't utilize all of the features that Word and Excel has. You're gonna see a lot more features 
in Microsoft software, and that was a big seller for me. Even presentations with Google Slides versus PowerPoint, that software is much more robust on the desktop with PowerPoint than with slides. It's great to have slides be all in the cloud and be able to do what it does in the cloud, but it's far too simple. The main thing for me was fear of getting away from Gmail. I'd been using Gmail forever, both personally with a personal Gmail account and with Google Workspace. And Gmail has always been good to me. It's a simple user interface. It's very clean. It's not the most, most feature packed, but you can install apps to kind of add functionality with Google Workspace was great. But when I switched over and started using Outlook, I realized that Outlook has come a long way and Outlook is absolutely fantastic. Microsoft has stopped making Outlook be an old school convoluted mess, which is what it used to be. And I used to complain about it all the time because Outlook was kind of like using Internet Explorer. It was broken all the time. Whenever emails would come through, they didn't look good. Things were always shaped weird, didn't load and stuff like that. And Outlook has changed completely. And it is a new beast in and of itself as a great piece of software. And so as I started using Outlook, both on this Dell laptop and on my Mac, and then even the mobile applications on my smartphone, I realized that this tool is something that's going to solve a lot of other problems that I have with having to jump between different applications. I was using a different task manager, like I said before, Todoist and then TickTick. That's separate software for task management that I have to pay for. I was using different email clients because I wanted email clients with more features that tied in calendar and did a bit more than the stock Gmail app. That's costing me money. Outlook provided all of these things and the interface, the user interface for Outlook has improved so much that it's on par with a lot of the better applications that you would get third party, like Spark, which is what I was using. I was paying for Spark. It's a great application. It has a lot of great features. However, Outlook has everything integrated. It's lacking a couple of the integration features that I'm, I'm kind of missing from Spark but not so much that I would rather have multiple applications for everything. Whether you're doing Outlook online or Outlook as software is not as clean and simple as Gmail. It's better in the sense that it has more features and that it has all of those tools within one app. How about collaboration? Talking about using Google Chat or Google Meet versus Spaces and Microsoft Teams. I really like the simplicity of Google Meet. Whenever I have to meet with somebody over a video call, Google Meet is super simple. I like using it over Zoom and Teams is a bit much. I've had to use Teams over the last several years with one of my clients and I've never really enjoyed Teams. However, it is getting a lot better. Teams is becoming a tool that really brings together a lot of other communication tools that people would use across different platforms. And while it's still not perfect, it's getting much better. And if you're utilizing it for an internal team, it's probably one of the best things that are out there because of how integrated it is with Microsoft. I'm, I'm liking Teams a lot more and I'm finding ways to enjoy it more, even though I don't have an internal team that I need to manage but in using it to collaborate with clients and in other ways, I do like it. And I still tend to use Google Meet or Zoom, depending on whatever my client that I'm working with prefers, just because it keeps it simple. But if I was managing an internal team, Teams would definitely add a lot to my experience. Now, storage is probably one of the last things that I'm gonna talk about because OneDrive is something that I used to avoid because OneDrive just wasn't that great. It was slow and it didn't integrate well with the other tools that I was using. But now that I'm on Microsoft's platform and using Dropbox, I'm thinking maybe I should look at using OneDrive, even though there aren't any opportunities for me to move over the like 50 something terabytes of data that I have in Dropbox box over to OneDrive, I know that I need to do some cleanup. I need to do more than some spring cleaning and get rid of old files that are very large that I just don't need anymore that I've been holding on to for some reason. Moving over to OneDrive may be something that I can do in the future. 
What I am using it for is syncing my laptop to it. So the laptop with OneDrive on it can back up to OneDrive. And so I'm backing up my desktop, my documents, my downloads folder and all of that stuff so that it's constantly backed up. I like that. I'm also now connecting my phone to OneDrive. So my phone is backing up its photos to OneDrive as well, which is nice. I was having it back up to Dropbox because I'm using Dropbox. In the past, it was backing up to Google Drive. I'm still using Google Photos, and I've always been using my Google Photos app with my personal Gmail account anyways, and so I kind of consider that separate. I like Google Photos because Google Photos is really good at organizing my photos and with facial recognition and all that good stuff, so I probably don't see myself switching from that anytime soon because I have so much history with Google Photos and Microsoft doesn't have an exact replacement for Google Photos. So for now, Google Photos is what I'm sticking with. But as far as storage goes, Google Drive was getting really slow for me. Uploading and getting things in and out of Google Drive was becoming quite a pain. And Dropbox really has that dialed in. And I feel like OneDrive, if you're on a PC, has that really dialed in as well. If you're on a Mac, you can install OneDrive there and utilize OneDrive on a Mac. I still think Dropbox really has that syncing dialed in and it makes it much easier for me to manage sending files and sharing files with others utilizing Dropbox. That's my experiences. Now, there's a lot of other tools that Microsoft 365 comes with that I don't need that are great to have and I may utilize in the future. But the one thing is that Microsoft 365 is saving me a ton of money being able to get rid of all of these different subscriptions and utilize one platform. And on top of that, the platform has matured so much and is really a nice platform to use. I feel like Microsoft really is caring about looking forward and providing tools that we need to run our businesses where Google is kind of asleep at the wheel and not doing anything other than just maintaining their platform. I haven't seen much as far as new tools come to Google's platform. They're really gonna need to do something when it comes to these tools, or they're gonna see a lot of people leave for Microsoft 365, just as I have. So if you have any questions you wanna ask down in the comment section below, make sure to do that. I've got a link in the description below. If you wanna try out Google Workspace, you can click on that. Right now it's not an affiliate link, but it may become one. Nonetheless, it helps support the channel and I appreciate it. But give us a subscribe and make sure to check out the link to our online courses in the description below. We have lots of online courses from photography to web design, and I'd love for you to check those out. Many of them are free courses, so make sure to check out that link in the description, and I hope to see you back in another video soon. Take care.